It's a new day at Volo Auto Museum. Hey, Brenda, I got something I need to tell you. Oh, boy. I need to get more inventory. You always need more inventory and grandpa and his stuff. Oh, you remember this? I got that down in Oklahoma. Oh, that's when you spent over a million dollars, isn't it? That's what's coming up again. I need that million dollars. It's 10 a.m. and the boys are late for their meeting with dad. Jay, tell me, what do you got for me this week? My big trip down to Oklahoma's coming up this week. High end Larry, he rounds up all these cars for me. I give him a little commission when I buy a car. Isn't that where your secret spot yeah, is, that's too? that's my secret spot. I've gotten some great cars from a guy down there that restores high-end rare muscle cars does about one or two a year in addition to that I'm going to an event in Wichita Kansas at the Walzer Auto Group the million dollar uh, car clubs bringing all these high-end cars to be on display and look. is that the one that they're bringing the serial number one Camaro serial number one Camaro will be there oh yeah. oh, you do good with Camaros and Mustangs but I think that's a little over your budget I doubt if it's gonna be for sale but it doesn't hurt to look. You're going to be right there. What's your budget this year? What do you want? A uh, million dollars ought to do it. I'm glad I don't have to go on this. Who said you were invited? Brian, you might be going there. I don't have anything going on. I was going to take a vacation. I got no reason to go. There's a cast iron stove I need over there for our 32 covered wagon camper. You wanted a vacation. I think this would be a great time. They got old stuff over there. I was thinking sandy beaches and palm trees, not cow pies and cow town. It was not long after the motor vehicle became a familiar sight on American streets that the covered wagon camper came to be. Americans wanted to take their lives on the road, including the conveniences of the modern home, and covered wagon campers made that possible. You know, the covered wagon campers were one of the very first campers. They only built them for a handful of years throughout the 30s and possibly the early 40s. And very few of them still exist today. They were made out of wood and leatherette, and they just fell apart, deteriorated, or burned to the ground. The different models of covered wagons ranged from $400 to $1,200, depending on the options selected by the customer. One of those optional features was a pot-bellied stove, an item easily acquired at the time, but which today might only be found in a place called Cowtown. Yeah, we've got this 1932 covered wagon that we restored, and the only thing it was missing was this pot belly stove. My dad wants it complete. My uh, good friend Ryan tells me he's got one. He sent me a photo. It looks like it's the right one. It's got the covered wagon on it. You got pictures of it. You should be able to verify it from there. Why don't you just UPS it out there? Why do I gotta go with it? That is, uh, a needle in a haystack to be able to find that. I want you to inspect this very well. And cast iron does crack, and once it cracks, it is junk. We didn't discuss price. I'm gonna put a budget of high as $10,000. I have to have it. He can handle this. If there's this uh, high-end event with the first Camaro, who knows what kind of one-of-a-kinds they'll have there. Buying the first Camaro would probably be cheaper than paying for your barbecues. Brian, you got a budget for a cast iron pot belly stove, and that's it. No, I'm gonna steal some of your budget. The boys are off to Oklahoma with a stove to buy and a million bucks to burn. The boys have traveled to the small town of Salisaw, Oklahoma to begin Jay's million dollar buying tour. All right, I've got a million dollar budget on this trip and my plan is to buy lots of cars, good cars. This morning, I already got my eye on a 32 Ford hot rod. I'll buy that. Brian's trying to get his fingers into my budget. He's not touching it. I say we race for it. For what? For the budget. I need some money to buy that car. You have no budget. That's why we need to race. The boys are ready to race with half a million dollars on the line. Although the 32 Ford took an early lead, Brian's 32 Chevy crosses the line first. I don't know what's worse, losing part of my budget or losing the race. The Chevy Brian was running, had a little more engine. It was definitely the car, not the driver. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious that it's the driver. It's all the driver. Brian buys both cars, and despite the result, Jay is happy. My brother and I, we each get to bring home a 32 coupe. We search the country for classic cars. I work with Jay at Bolo. I heard that Jay had a million dollars to spend on this trip, and I'm going to try to help him spend more than that. We're Midway Auto Sales and Classic Cars Inc. The Riviera and the Thunderbird, I really think, would be up his alley. I bought a 64 Riviera today. Good piece of merchandise. They call it a personal luxury car. It's still got the sportiness of bucket seats and cool gauges and a shifter on the floor. Good car for an older guy that wants luxury and performance. The other car was a Hemi Charger, but it was a one of one color and he just wanted a lot of money for it. My million dollar budget is still mostly intact. We'll find some more cars. And we pull up to this law building out in the middle of nowhere and I figured there's not going to be anything in this 
tin can. I was watching Brian. The look on his face was priceless when he walked in and seen an LS6 Chevelle on the floor. He's saying that this is a secret spot. He made me wear a blindfold on the way here. In a small town, most people don't think about something like this being here. Believe it or not, this is my hobby. We start from scratch on these cars, tear them down, and rebuild them back to what you see today. Jay, I just happened to have one all ready for you. It's a 1970 Chevelle LS6. And this is a top of the line that GM built back in 1970. 450 horsepower. That was the biggest advertised horsepower that was the that biggest time. advertised horsepower that was available. This is a four-speed car, bucket seat, console, 410 gears in the rear, the M22 transmission. This car has all the original equipment on it from the radiator to anything that's under the hood. It smells like a new car. Jay is very happy to make a deal with Steve on the LS6. The way that Steve restored these cars is unbelievable. The million-dollar buying spree continues at an Oklahoma car corral, where OK Larry has located a 1949 Ford for Jay. I was talking to a guy about a 4940 he has here. Nice red color with the gray interior. It looks fantastic. Jay buys the 49 Ford before heading to a nearby car show, where there are plenty of great cars, but not all of them are for sale. Hey, is this car for sale? No, sir. Hey, is this car for sale? Prisoner. We got some great cars, but uh, we're running out of time on this trip, and I still got a lot of money to spend, so I'm hoping I get some cars. The boys are at Walzer Auto Group in Wichita, Kansas. They got a real mix of high-end exotic cars with the old classic. I could spend a million dollars here at this location. Brian is immediately drawn toward a 1971 Cabriolet. The 280 SE Cabriolet that's here is a very well-restored car. I mean, it's an excellent, excellent specimen. The boys also take a look at a truly rare piece. The first Camaro made is here right now. That would put a serious dent in our budget. We'd have to make a call to dad. Jay's normally not a fan of the one-of-a-kind cars like what I buy. But uh, there is occasions where I'd like him to be. That is good merchandise besides being a collector car. The only problem is the car's worth six. The way Walzer sells cars stems back to 2002 when one of the brothers looked over the horizon and said, I don't think people want to haggle and hassle anymore. The internet's going to change everything. So we decided to start putting our best price on all our cars, on the internet, on the newspapers, and not negotiating. Jay loves the Lincoln and also enjoys the experience of the no pressure sale. Now it's a 57 Lincoln. 57 Lincoln is 1950s turquoise and it's a convertible. I think they're just a great value. You can get a lot of car for the money now. While Jay buys the Lincoln, Brian buys the Cabriolet. With the million dollar buying spree at an end, the boys travel back in time to a place called Cowtown in Wichita, Kansas to pick up a pot-bellied stove for their father, Greg. My dad's restoring a 1932 covered wagon camper, and he wants it completely authentic and original. And this was the one piece that we were missing. Cowtown's been here since the 1950s. It's the only place in the country has this type of history. As far as our most popular buildings for the fellas, it's going to be the blacksmith shop. Brian brings out the pot-bellied stove. This must be the stove that we're coming to get. Yeah, this is the one we had over in tutorial that's not even our time period. A lot of people get confused because of the covered wagon. Yeah, that yeah. was actually a, a camper from uh, the 1930s. Finding one of these things, just a, a needle in a haystack. All right, so what do we owe you? Well, you tell Greg he owes me one, and you better tell him if he stumbles upon late 1800s little giant trip hammer give me a call big yeah. hammer move a lot of metal real quick my dad's been looking a long time for one of these stoves the camper's already restored and this was the missing piece greg now has the final component to complete his classic camper tell me about your oklahoma your million dollar trip how did we do well it turned out to be about a half million dollar trip it was just tough for getting cars this year we did bring back 10 cars and still have four more on their way one of them was an ls6 chevelle full pedigree all the papers perfectly restored i've already got people there coming out to see it that'll pay for the trip brian and i did drag race a 32 ford against a 32 chevy we went to a walzer auto group and they had a real nice selection of some high-end cars i picked up a mercedes convertible that uh, okay. was a lot like the one from the movie The Hangover. So he went to Cowtown and I saw Ryan and we ended up getting that pot belly stove. It was the real deal. It had the covered wagon uh, on the front it of it. It said covered wagon right on there. It had the logo right on the front and it looked like it was fully restored. I mean, it, it, I thought it was brand new, but it's restored. You're gonna love the price too. Zero, free. Zero? He knows what we have here and he wanted it to go to a good home. Well, because it is a museum and it is going on permanent display. It's not for making money, it's for everybody to see. And now this camper is completed and I never thought it would be. So that was a very, very, very good week. Although Jay spent over half a million dollars on the trip, it was the free and extremely rare pot-bellied stove that put the bigger smile on Greg's face, which just goes to show that some things really are priceless.